So I am going to talk about the psychotherapist as activist today because um, I mean, I trained many years ago, and like all of us, my work has enlarged and expanded, and I can no longer just call myself a transpersonal psychotherapist, because it depends who I'm working with. I might be a healer, I might be a bit more shaman, I might be sort of crazy clown, sort of playing the guitar. I once did a session with someone and we just played blues, and they had a, a breakthrough. So that we really need to move away from all these rigid definitions of what psychotherapy is about. And what I've come to see in my work is, is first of all that being a psychotherapist is really being an activist of sorts. And secondly, that a big part of the healing of my clients is to help them come into their, their own activism. Because I think that's very important. Because when we touch into being an activist for a cause that we believe in or that um, we want to take a stand for, and it's often something that we've suffered through, the best drug counselors are those who've been ex-junkies, the best women's rights activists are those who've had abuse. And so there always needs to be a kind of emotional connection with where we're concerned. But for me, why I think activating the activist archetype, because it really is an archetype inside ourselves, is so important, is for three things. We feel happy and whole when we're helping others. We experience meaning and there's great therapeutic benefits. As dear Yuri in his wonderful talk the other day sort of quoted Gandhi, and I'm going to quote him again, the best way to find yourself is in the service of others. And the esoteric teacher, Dwaj Kuhl, I used to be a student of the Alice Bailey esoteric um, sort of teachings many years ago, this this, um, this teacher said, service is of many kinds, and the person who wisely renders it and who seeks to find his particular sphere and finding it gives effort for the benefit of the whole is the one whose own development proceeds steadily. And certainly that has been my experience. When um, I lived in California for many years, in the 70s and 80s, and my psychotherapist did the best intervention ever when she said to me, Serge, I'm going to stop seeing you and giving you sessions for a month because you're getting too centered on yourself. You're, you're just being involved in your own process and you're disconnecting from the world outside. Go and do something to help other people. And it was actually true, and that is one of my critiques of a lot of therapy. We get to involve just with ourselves. So anyway, I went off and I got my guitar and I played songs to people in old people's homes, you know, the, the, so sort of that was my service. And I worked with people on the streets who were sort of down and out. And I realized this did more for me and gave me a perspective of life than had I done five sessions of therapy every single week for six weeks. Because it put things in perspective. It made me realize that who I am, I'm part of the whole. I belong to the whole. And that is just so very, very, very important. 
Bob Mr. Fuller, that great sage that young people haven't heard about, but, but he was a great sort of visionary thinker of the early part of the 20th century. He described man as a global reorder. In other words, who we are, what's our purpose in you being a human being, is to somehow play a role in the conscious reordering and reorganization of the planet. And I think the beautiful thing of what being an activist does is that it takes us out of our egocentric consciousness, just me, or our ethnocentric consciousness, just me and my little tribe and what's best for us, into the planet-centric consciousness. Because this is where we really need to be evolving. And surely therapy is to help people evolve into who we really need to be. It's not just about feeling better, it's about our being better as a human being. And so that in my life, I've met a lot of so-called spiritual people who eat, who speak very quietly, and they do their yoga every day, and they meditate, and they do their mantra, and it's all focused on themselves. And they couldn't care two hoots about others, and they say to you, yeah, yeah. Feeling really beautiful today. Yeah, it's all good, it's all beautiful. But I call that selfish spirituality because, as other speakers have said, as we move into the 21st century, our journey needs to be a collective journey. And, and, um, and, when you and I are truly ourselves is when we are in service. And I sit here, my true self and your true self is always one with the larger whole of life. And so the more we organize our lives to serve and honor that whole, the more we grow as a person. And given that world crises have accelerated, in the last five years, and we really are in quite a challenging or perilous situation. I think our activism needs to be refined. It needs to be, it needs the next stage of its development. And I personally was very inspired by this little Greta Thunberg, this thin little Asperger girl and her strong, strong vision. You know, she's, she's activated kids all over the planet to go on, you know, to, to demonstrate, which just shows that each of us as individuals, we can make a difference. And by the way, it's quite interesting that she's a Spurgeon because we often think that our psychological difficulties are standing in our way from being who we really are. But actually, they're part of our being who we really are. And I recently discovered that Einstein was also, um, also had a, a Spurge, um, Asperger's, which sort of made me think that he wasn't so inspired to go to cocktail parties, and so he had time to, you know, evolve his theory of relativity. <laughs> so, the question to ask is, how do we as therapists, how do we activate the activist in our plant? And of course, not every plant is ready for it. Some are too ill. But those who we feel are ready, I say the first thing is that we work on helping them open their hearts. 
Um, a few years ago, I wrote a book, um, um, Awakening the Universal Heart and the Emergence of Spiritual Activism. Because I think we can really only be an effective activist if we really feel strongly for a cause. It, it's not a mental thing that the power that we put into something has to come from our heart and from really feeling it. And when our hearts are open and we feel the devastation around us, it really inspires us to do something. So that is stage one. And I think that having had our hearts open, there's three things that we need to support the emergence of in our plant. And by the way, it all, they also have to emerge in ourselves because we really can't teach our plants stuff that we don't do. You know, as Einstein said, we, we need to be um, the cause that, that we bring into being, i.e. we need to embody our vision. It's not just about talking about it. And I said that the three things that are important in being an activist is to how we live our inner lives, how we earn our inner living, how we live our outer lives, what we do or don't do, and three, what exactly we do to serve the planet. Now, the inner lives if we work from an activist perception, we realize that what we need to help our plant with is move through those old stories that they've been conditioned with, that we've all been conditioned with, about how the world works. The stories that say that war is inevitable, um, the stories that keep us it attached to our Islamophobia or anti-Semitism or homophobia, all those ancient beliefs, those stories that tell us that the, that, that sort of life, that there's no hope and that, and that we're all separate from one another. We really need to work on helping our clients have a better relationship between their conscious and unconscious and let go of their own prejudice and value judgments. And we need to help our clients have peace in their hearts. And most important, very, 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 very important, work through their shadow. Now, I remember once I was doing a lot of shadow work with someone and I took an ayahuasca session because I was working with ayahuasca at the time. And I went deeply into the collective pattern of fascism in the world and the kind of evil of the old pattern of rigidified patriarchal bullying men. I knew there was a part of me that connected to it, but I knew that the path that I was going through was, was a human collective. And as those of you who've had ayahuasca will know, it gives you the strength to be able to face things that ordinarily you might not be strong enough to. So I remember I had this tremendous suffering of going through that collective pattern of the totalitarian mindset. And when I came out of that, I was so liberated. I was so liberated. And I realized that my psyche had taken me there because that's where my work was also about helping transform the wounded patterns on our planet. And I think all of us are psychotherapists that we all need to do the collective work which which um, sort of Yuri talked about um, in his in his wonderful talk yesterday. Now our outer lives is also really important how we live our outer lives. And there it's important 
not only what we do, but what we don't do. And I think we need to help our clients have a more, help them into ways of living that honor the planet. For example, help them to conserve and not consume. Help them to recycle their emotional garbage and their physical garbage. Sort of help them to work through their consumerism and their materiality and the emotional patterns that connect them to the consumerism and materiality. And, and you may say, well, this is not part of therapy. I say it is. If we see therapy as not just helping a person to feel better, but to operate in a way that supports the emergence of life on the planet. And so I had a client who worked for, for one of those firms that produced that oxy, Oxycontin, um, you know, that, um, that, that pill that all the English and American people are dying from an, from an overdose. And I was quite tough. I said, look, unless you take a stand in your firm and help them to do it, you're not, you're not being a real person. And so it's no good on just talking about a healthier sort of planet if we don't live in ways that help our planet transform. Now the third thing that we need to help our, our clients in is in how do you serve? What, what areas do you want to make a difference? Do you want to work you know, to save the whales? Do you want to write pamphlets on, on sort of rape and, you know, and, and help the Me Too movement? Um, you want to confront evil in an organization that you work for. And in my last book, I discussed eight areas that we could be active in, and I'll just briefly mention them to you. The first area I call being a radiator. We make a difference by the energy that we radiate and we give out. So we help our clients realize that their consciousness makes an enormous amount of difference to the consciousness of the planet. Like um, the spiritual teacher Ramana Maharshi, he seldom said a word, but his radiation produced enormous sort of benefit for everyone around him. Or we can be an initiator. We initiate important strategies that make a difference in the world. And there's a lot of you here who are initiators in various ways. And we can be a proclamator. I'm a bit of a proclamator. I go around sort of, you know, kind of talking like this. But it does make a difference. So our voice can also make a difference. And we can be an innovator. Few of us are innovators. I think of innovators of people like Carl Jung or Nikola Tesla or Ken Wilber. They innovate, they bring into being wholly new ways of looking at the world. And we can be an investigator, a whistleblower, <coughs> like those very courageous journalists who go behind the lines and expose the evil and corrupt organizations and, and regimes. And we can be an educator. A lot of us here are educators. And um, Jim, Jim Garrison talked about his new university of liberty to educate people into new ways of seeing the world, to educate people to realize that the knowledge is within them and we don't need to have our mind filled with all that stuff coming from without. And we can also be an agitator and a demonstrator and we go on demonstrations and we say no and, and we see wonderful examples of this in Hong Kong at the moment. These brave people on the streets 
confronting evil, confronting rogue regimes. And I guess we've got to do that. And it takes an enormous amount of courage. But if we activate the activist inside ourselves, our humanity and our altruism will grow. Now clearly, all this can't just happen through one-to-one -one therapy sessions. So that's why with my class, I expose them to the lectures I give to the um, um, to, to, um, to spiritual retreats and do a lot of work outside therapy because I feel that that is really needed. So some people come and they spend five days working with me and we work on these issues because I think it's very important. Because if the force can be with us, as they say in Star Wars, in other words, if we're aligned to our soul purpose, if we're doing the work that the universe has intended us individually to do, there'll be a lot more power in us. And we need to help our plants also have the force with them. Now, here's nine things um, I just wrote another book called um, Gateways to the Soul, Inner Work for the Outer World. It's coming out about this time next year. But I wrote about nine things that we can do right this moment. So if you have a pen, it's worth sort of writing these down. One, send healing energy to a part of the planet that we feel needs it. Syria. A place where there's been a terrible earthquake or a, or a tsunami. If we do this, it will also change our personal lives because we're going to have really good heating energy flowing through us. So, in helping in this way, we're also doing something for ourselves. Two, I was incredibly touched. One day, I came back to my car to put some more money in the meter because um, I left it too late. I sprinted back and I saw someone who put in a pound. It was in the days when it only cost a pound. That was a long time ago. But it really touched me that the person who dealt with their own car, looked at the car beside me, saw that it had gone off and thought, what a kind thing to do. And no one will know the kindness that they've done. I wish I knew that person. So think of random acts of kindness that you can do. Again, it gets us out of our own selfishness, out of our own personal misery. Because let's be honest, a lot of our misery is because we're too centered on ourselves and all these terrible things that we have wrong with us. You know, they may be terrible, but if we see our own issues in the light of the larger whole, then things change an enormous amount. Three, think of a friend in need. How can we help that friend? Four, we meditate every day on peace. Five, and this is really important, and I think that this practice has happened and I think it's the most important spiritual practice there is, and it's happened at this conference, is that we encounter everyone we meet in a spirit of friendliness and friendship. And I think we've done this. I have the feeling here that you're all my soul brothers and sisters, and, and I feel great affection for you. And there's a huge spirit of affection in this room. 
and we need to cultivate, we need to bring this spirit out into the world, and especially to people who are the outcasted, the downhouse. Those who feel excluded from society. Because if we talk about an integrative psychology, then these people represent our own disowned shadow side. And the more we can help them, the more we're working with our own shadow. So can you see that there's no separation really between doing the outer work and the inner work. We're also doing it for ourselves. I have to say in my own honesty that in the last, that I haven't done any personal therapy for many years, but I've done a lot of activist work, and it's been more helpful to me than any personal therapy. Okay, I may still have issues with my mother and father, I may still be a sort of narcissistic old sod. You know, you know I'll, probably, I'll probably never heal those wounds. But at least I'm doing something out there and that is healing me and giving me a good spirit inside. And also important, if we perceive wrong in any field, take a stand, do something about it. If we work for an organization and we see injustice and we see sort of bullying, do something about it. Don't wimp out. Be courageous. Because if we act out of courage, courage will come into us. There's a wonderful story I told in my book. I'll just quickly tell it. A guy I knew, a master in a health club I used to go to. And I went there once and old Harry was was wearing a suit. I said, Harry, you're normally in your little robe, sort of giving me sort of massages. And he said, I'm off to Buckingham Palace to get an award. I said, Harry, what happened? And he told me the story. He said that he was going back from work and a child was thrown on the railway line and he was there. And he jumped down and he threw the child up and he just got back up. Here's the point. I said to him, Harry, I never knew that you were courageous. And he said, I wasn't, but courage came into me in the moment that I chose to leap down. And something changed in me. And everything happened in slow motion. And I had my, my coat ripped off, so another hundredth of a second, and he'd have been rinsed meat. But that's the point. And then he said to me, and my life has changed from that incident. I feel inspired and touched, and I want to stop being a massa in this place. And, you know, massage ghastly old fogies like you, sir, she said to me. I want to stop doing that, and I want to have more adventure in my life. So the service is also about adventure. And if I look at the people who are the real activists I know doing fantastic things, they're adventurous people. And if we choose to do it, new aspects of our humanity can come into expression. And I think that is so, so, so important. So I'm going to finish with a tiny little process that if you can close your eyes. And just think about, and go into your inner heart, in, in the middle of your, in the middle of your chest. And just sink into your heart.
And I'd like you to think of a quality that you really need to have more of in order to be more of an activist than you are. Perhaps the quality is love or courage or joy. Whatever that quality is, it exists in your heart. Allow it to come out. And imagine that quality resonating inside your heart. Sheath of 
protective, loving, healing energy. Oh, 